thankful to have you watching CNN 10 on this Wednesday in April. I'm Carl Azus at the CNN Center. First story we're explaining today involves the leader of the world's most populated nation. Chinese President Xi Jinping gave a speech yesterday that was closely watched around the world. A big reason for that is because China and the U.S. have spent recent weeks going back and forth putting tariffs or taxes on goods imported from the other country. Economists have warned that this could lead to a trade war, though both sides have said that's not what they're after. Still, it's had an effect on the stock market. Worries about a trade war have caused the Dow Jones Industrial Average of 30 significant stocks to take some major dives recently, losing hundreds of points in a given day. But then, on days when investors thought trade war talk was only talk, the Dow gained hundreds of points in a given day. Yesterday, for example, it closed up 429 points. In his speech, China's president made a statement that eased investors' fears about a trade war. What we don't know yet is whether President Xi will follow through on his promises or if he's just trying to slow the pace of the back and forth tariffs. Well, in past years, this was not the kind of speech that would have attracted all that much attention. But in the midst of a looming China-US trade war, each word delivered by President Xi Tuesday on Hainan Island was important. He started by playing to what most countries around the world want to hear right now, that China is reforming, that it is a responsible international player, and that a trade war is not in its best interests. China will continue to adhere to its fundamental national policy of opening up and pursue development with its doors wide open. I wish to make it clear to you all that China's door of opening up will not be closed and would only open even wider. She then went on to speak about strengthening intellectual property rights, about uh, increasing market access for foreign companies. Uh, and when he spoke about increasing foreign imports, he specifically brought up automobiles, saying that he would lower tariff rates significantly by the end of this year. That is absolutely a nod to the United States. Consider what President Trump tweeted on Monday. When a car is sent to the United States from China, he wrote, there is a tariff to be paid of 2.5%. When a car is sent to China from the United States, there is a tariff to be paid of 25%. Does that sound like free or fair trade? No, it sounds like stupid trade going on for years. So the Chinese decision to include this issue in that speech was certainly not a coincidence, though we've seen Chinese state media saying that this speech was in no way a response to potential U.S. trade action. Believe that if you will. That said, for all the reforms that Xi Jinping laid out, there were only a few new details sprinkled in. For the most part, these are reforms that have been promised by the Chinese government for years now across multiple U.S. administrations. And most economic analysts and businessmen and women that we speak to here in China would argue that they have yet to be realized. This speech did not offer any sort of new, bold, substantive changes that the government hasn't talked about before. So the question becomes, is this speech and the promises of reform inside of it going to be enough to prompt the Trump administration to back down from its tariff proposals? The U.S. has said it wants to negotiate better terms with China, so it will be interesting to see if this speech by President Xi is enough to alleviate the concerns of policymakers in Washington. Matt Rivers, CNN, Beijing. 10-second trivia. Which of these includes more than 2 billion people? Facebook users, population of China, YouTube users, or population of India? More than 2 billion people are said to use Facebook every month, making it the most populated option on this list. Very different type of speaking event is also having an effect on the market. The stock price of the Facebook social media company went up yesterday when its CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, testified to the U.S. Congress. The privacy of Facebook users' data is a major focus of these hearings. They started almost a month after news broke that a company named Cambridge Analytica accessed the personal information of as many as 87 million Facebook users without their knowledge. It's clear now that we didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm as well. And that goes for fake news, for foreign interference in elections and hate speech, as well as developers and data privacy. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. 
But though Zuckerberg admitted that Facebook fell short in preventing abuse of the service, he defended the company's practice of using people's personal information to target ads. He said users overwhelmingly prefer to see advertisements based on their interests than irrelevant ones. In recent days, Facebook's had a lot of updates designed to address concerns about data privacy. But some lawmakers and critics still have concerns about what information Facebook is collecting from its users, who has access to it, and how it's being used. Okay, next story. Parkinson's is a disease that affects the brain and has symptoms like uncontrollable shaking, slow movements, and trouble keeping balance. Dementia also involves the brain. Memory loss, trouble communicating, changes in mood and personality can happen. Years ago, Erwin Rosenstein was diagnosed with both Parkinson's and dementia, but his wife Carol found a way to use music to help Erwin and more than 200 others like him nationwide. She's a CNN hero. When my husband Erwin was diagnosed with Parkinson's and dementia, our lives were turned upside down. We're really blessed to have each other still every day. To hear something like that when you're about to set out on a golden journey of retirement is quite earth-shattering. You ready to go in? Yes. All right. Every day is a roller coaster. New symptoms show, their vocabulary is not accessible to them, and mental disease carries a terrible stigma people hide out in the shadows. One day, Owen was playing the piano at home. He appeared to be more conscious. Playing a musical instrument is like a full body workout for the brain. The music actually resurrected him. Yay! Thank you. How are you? We needed to get some musical buddies so that we could all party together. <laughs> so I started a band for Irwin. The band is called The Fifth Dementia. Didn't take long before I recognized that we were onto something really grand. So I started an organization that was intent on starting bands for people with neurodegenerative decline. Everybody comes together under this wonderful umbrella of music. Our band members regain their confidence, their identities, and their self-worth. This is a powerful support group that gives people an opportunity to go out and socialize. Caregivers love and hug and cry together because we're all in the same boat. And here's to music. The concerts bring great pride to our musicians. My own personal suffering is the fuel that I use to propel this forward. This project can have people happy till the 11th hour, because that's what the power of music is all about. Many police forces have canine units. When one gets a feline unit, 10 out of 10. Something cataclysmic is afoot in the city of Troy, Michigan. The police chief there said that if his department's Twitter page got 10,000 followers, it could also get a police cat. The Michigan Humane Society is providing the cat applicants, and whoever gets the job will be the station mascot. It'll live with an officer, but spend its days hanging out at the office. Simon Chowdhury of affiliate WXYZ had some excellent questions for the cat didits, like how they felt about cat burglars or if they'd ever been caught with catnip. That made cat scratch the surface, but we'd also want to know if they'd had any misstep meowners or if they'd been convicted of littering or caterwauling before they try to Siamese their way into joining the long arm of the claw. I'm Carl Azuz and Cat's All for CNN 10.